Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this DIY camera gimbal stabilizer backpack, which is inspired by Cheesy Cam uh, and Modest Reaction. Um, there's also some elements of the camera atlas support and the ready rig. So when I uh, was searching for some camera stabilizer support systems, I felt like most of them were out of my budget range. Even some of the stuff that you could find on eBay overseas was just a little bit too much for, for my budget. Um, so I decided to uh, search the internet and you know found, stumbled upon cheesy cams and that led to uh, me sort of wanting to improve upon that design. So uh, a lot of these parts um, you could get on eBay or uh, Home Depot. Most of it you could get at Home Depot because if you're like me, when you want a DIY project, you don't want to wait like, you know, a long time uh, to make it. You're sort of inspired. You want to run out to the hardware store and just get all the supplies. So um, you can get most of this stuff um, at Home Depot. You may already own a lot of these things like these key rings, you know, uh, or some of these hooks and stuff or straps. So I'm flying the Veravon Birdie Cam right now. And this is sort of one of the smaller uh, three axis camera gimbals made for small DSLRs or um, you know the mirrorless cameras like the GH4 or the A7S. And uh, while these are very lightweight, um, I find myself only able to hold this thing for like a minute or two before my arms and upper body start struggling and start wobbling. And you know, I, I sort of move focus, my focus shifts away from the actual composition of the scene and it, it kind of makes me it distracts me, you know, and I just think about my endurance and how long I can actually hold it for. Uh, so I, I felt like I needed some sort of support system and that's why I, wa I wanted to create my own. After you do the build, I think your stabilizer will sort of take on a whole new life as it has for me. Um, I could hold this thing for, you know, probably an hour without being super strained or anything. It's actually that comfortable. Um, I can, you know, let go. Uh, and it, it supports it perfectly. All of the weight is distributed across my torso. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I also pair this up with my, um, my self-balancing scooter and I could do a lot of cool, super smooth, like 360 shots. So yeah, I definitely think you should take on this DIY project. I think it's really, really easy to do. Um, and again, it's, it's gonna open up so many creative possibilities for you. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of improvement um, that could be done to something like this a lot of different ways that you can kind of upgrade it or make it more modular um, And I'd love to get your feedback on that. So Let's check it out. Here's how you do it So the first item that you want to get and probably the most important item is the this Molly 2 uh, frame backpack frame um, You can find it on eBay. I have a link uh, it basically includes this really heavy-duty frame as well as these shoulder straps over here and this waist support. Um, so this entire system is what makes this rig work. So this is really the key here. Um, I found it on eBay, $40, about $40 shipped. Um, and so this is probably the one thing that you're gonna have to get shipped, but it's really uh, a really great piece of gear. It's, um, it's the Molly 2 system. So the military uses that, uh, you know, for, uh, various missions and stuff so you know that this stuff is really built to last. Um, it's modular so you can sort of add a rucksack on here and other things. Plenty of uh, open spaces for straps uh, if you want to add any additional gear. I wouldn't. I think that you know I like to keep this kind of clean and you know and and just use it for um, for my uh, stabilizer for my gimbal. So um, but yeah but you can find all kinds of uses for this. Um, but yeah so this is a very essential, important part of this entire rig. So the next item that you wanna get are these four fiberglass tent poles. I only have two here because the other two are attached to the rig, but you're gonna want a total of four uh, fiberglass tent poles. These are about 27 inches long, uh, 9.5 millimeter diameter. Um, so you could get these on eBay as well or any sporting goods store, you may already own these. Uh, make sure that they have these metal ferrules over here so that they can connect together like so. 
Another item you'll need to connect the tent poles to the frame are these eight inch cable ties. Uh, you could get these in a 20 pack at Home Depot. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. Um, but yeah, these are uh, 20 count, eight inch cable ties. Um, and these are essential uh, to, to attach these fiberglass poles to the Molly 2 frame. Uh, you might want to get another pack just in case, but one, uh, one 20 pack uh, should be fine. So the next item that you want to get is this multi-purpose wire. Uh, it's a utility wire, four strand. It's braided together. Um, it's 100 pound rated, uh, 100 feet. So the next thing that you want to get are two of each of these items. The first one is the carabiner. This is a 150 pound rated carabiner. Um, again, you could find this at your local Home Depot. Super easy to find. You may already own these, um, but yeah, two of each. And then for this one, it's uh, basically a small zinc plated washer. Um, again, you may already own some of these. Next, and this is for purely cosmetic reasons, you're gonna wanna get this flex tubing. Um, one is half inch and the other one is 3 8 inch. Um, so this flex tubing, this one will cover the exposed metal wire uh, and this will cover the top uh, fiberglass rod. Um, again, purely for cosmetic reasons, but I think, um, I think it just adds a little bit uh, more of an aesthetic appeal to the rig. Um, I think this, you know, this covering the metal wire makes it look a little more polished. Next are the adjustable straps. I found these Husky hangalls in Home Depot. Um, these are commonly used to hold tools, bikes, and things like that, uh, you know, gardening tools in your garage. Um, but these are adjustable, they have Velcro on them. Um, so you could change the height for your, uh, your camera gimbal and, you know, raise it uh, so you get higher on your chest. Uh, so these I found uh, super cheap. Um, these are the 18 inch hangalls. So to attach the rig to the actual gimbal, uh, I use these kind of standard one and a half inch key rings uh, that you could get at, again, at Home Depot, super cheap, um, as well as these two Velcro straps. Uh, I put, I kind of double these up on the handle and stick these through it. And I'll show you later on uh, how to do that. But you're gonna need two key rings and four of these straps. So step one is to assemble this Molly 2 frame onto the shoulder straps as well as the waist support. There is a tutorial that I found on YouTube that actually covers this. It's really detailed. Um, there's a very specific way on how these things lock together um, because when you get this, it doesn't have any instructions, uh, unfortunately, but um, just watch the video that I embedded and it'll show you exactly how to put this thing together. And make sure you follow the directions. You wanna make sure that these straps are tight. You know, everything fits because this is essentially the core of the entire rig. This is like, this is what makes the rig um, super heavy duty. So just watch that and assemble this. Okay, so the next step is assembling the rods. You should have four of these in total, two on each side of the, the backpack rig. Um, so essentially you just have to connect each rod together right here at the metal, metal ferrule right here. And um, together these rods should be about uh, 54 inches in length as you can see. So that should be the total length for each side, left and right. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take this metal braided wire and we're going to basically push it through this pole on this end, the uh, kind of clean end, and push it all the way through to this side. And this would be the top of the rig, okay? so. Just find the end on your wire right here. And you're going to I'll flip this around like this. Okay, so you take the end of the wire and you're just gonna carefully push it through like so. Uh, so just push it slowly, it should go in fine. Um, you don't want to bend the wire, so just make sure it goes in smooth. 
you get to this edge and it's, you feel like it's hitting the other pole, you just take the pole out, disconnect it, keep pushing it through till it comes out on this side. Stick this pole back in. Connect it and continue pushing the wire through all the way until the end. Just take your time, go slow, and at this point, I'll flip this around again. At this point, you should have the other side come through. And um, once you get it to this side, just pull about a foot or so until you have it there. Okay, so now that you have, uh, this is the top of the pole, now that you have some braided wire coming through the top, uh, you're going to wrap it around this carabiner. Uh, and you wanna be sure to get it to wrap it around this side, the small side, not the, not the large side, but the small side. And uh, this is gonna be pretty easy. It's uh, pretty much the same way that you would, um, you would tie picture wire when you're hanging a large frame. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to loop this around like so. Do two tight loops, right? So we're gonna bend it here you can see we're bending it right along the small end and you want to get it as tight as you can and just get a nice tight loop there. You see a little loop and then you're going to push this end right through and you're going to do one more loop. So you have two loops. You just kind of lean on that and wrap this up like so. So you have two tight loops. You could use some pliers if you want to get it real tight like that. Okay. So now that you have these two loops wrapped around the small end of the carabiner, you're going to take this end and you're going to wrap it, wrap the wire around itself. So it forms almost like a noose. Okay. So you're going to now take these this edge and you're going to start wrapping it around the wire like so. I'm using my shoulder here to keep the rod down and you just wrap it around itself. You just keep going up, up the wire like that. So you're forming like a noose and this is basically Keeps it really secure. Okay, you could, you could probably do this by hand. You just keep wrapping it. Just keep wrapping it like that. All the way to the end. Okay. And once you get to the end, uh, to avoid any sharp points sticking out from the wire, you want to use your needle nose pliers and just carefully wrap it flush as best as you can around the wire. Just to keep it in place. So when you're done, you should have something like this. And I'll, I'll bring it up close so you can check it out. Okay. So when you're done, you should have something that resembles this. Kind of like a noose around the carabiner. So once you have this wrapped around the carabiner, you want to measure approximately 12 inches from the carabiner edge to 
the tip of this uh, metal, metal ferrule on the fiberglass rod, okay? So you take your ruler, put it on the edge, and you just pull the wire through until you have approximately 12 inches. All right? So you wanna make sure you have 12 inch distance. This is important. 12 inch distance from this end to this end. Next, you're going to uh, do the other side. So we're gonna flip this around like so. And we're gonna to come to this end over here. And what we're gonna do is measure about six inches on this side. So we will cut about six inches here. Okay. If you want, um, you could double check to make sure that this side is still good. 12 inches across. Yep, this looks good. So, just so you don't accidentally change the length here, you can bend this right here, just so you know. That way you have a little bit of a mark. Uh, and then what you wanna do next is you're gonna measure one inch on this wire which is right around here, and you're going to bend that. And that is where you're going to put your washer. You can take your washer right here, and you're going to stick it through on this side. And you're just going to bend the wire over the washer. Take your needle nose pliers and just squeeze it down Okay, so that is that end. So it should look something like this. So it should look something like this. You just bend the wire over. And then what we're gonna do is Okay, and then what we're gonna do is wrap it around itself, just like we did with the carabiner. So we just simply wrap it like so. You just wrap it around, holding this side of the washer. Just keep wrapping it and wrapping it, and you should have some slack left over. That's okay. Just wrap it around. Make sure you still have that one inch length from here to the end of the washer. You're just gonna take your pliers if you want. You grab another set of pliers to hold this side. Secure. And take your needle nose and just wrap it around one last time. If it overlaps itself, that's okay. You just wanna make sure you have one inch from the washer to the end of the fiberglass pole. And again, try to get these points sticking out as flush as you can. You don't want these things to accidentally poke you. So just get them, get them nice and flush.
like so. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. Kind of like a noose. And this washer is just here as sort of a safety measure. But um, it pretty much won't, the wire won't push through here with all of this um, bunched up. Okay, so the next step is you want to secure the fiberglass pole onto the Molly 2 frame. Um, what you want to do is have these two bottom straps that are attached to the waist support. You want to kind of loosen them up like so. You know, these bottom two straps here. And essentially you're going to take your pole um, and you take this end and you're going to insert it into here. And you want to make sure that this sort of like uh, the edge of this rod hits the edge of this frame. Okay. So you just kind of lift your straps up, push them through and just have it rest as close as possible to the edge of the frame. And what you want to do is you want to tighten the straps like so. Tighten these straps. It's a little tricky. You might want to have these straps come out like that. Over here. And you just push, you just pull it. And you get it nice and tight. Again, make sure that this rod is hitting the bottom of the, of the frame, of the Molly 2 frame. And you want to tug it and get it as tight and taut as possible. Once you have this locked in here, nice and tight, you want to zip tie everything, okay? I like to take these straps out and fold them inwards. And put it through this buckle. I'll just put, them, put these to the side for now. But I like to have all the straps facing inwards. You know, it makes it, makes it a little bit cleaner, less things to kind of flap around, so. There you go. Okay, and next you're gonna want uh, seven zip ties. Uh, these are gonna go up along the frame, one after the other. So the first one we're going to do is this side right here. And this will be coming right after these, right above these first two straps. Um, I like to actually go in this way so the end goes inwards, right through here, up through the little strap hole, like so. And I just zip tie this way. I like to go in through here so that the, the, uh, the zip ties kind of face inwards and I could cut them and have everything sort of like facing inside of the frame. I think it's just a little bit more cleaner. So you just get that a little tight. We're gonna tighten this up later. So you just wanna get, get that in to secure it. And you're gonna skip this. You're gonna skip this hole and you're gonna go to the next hole. And again, same thing. Go in through this way. Have the zip tie come up, loop around. and just secure it. You don't have to get too tight with it just yet. And then another time, I'm gonna skip this side. I'm gonna go right here. Again, through this little hole here. Up and around. Zip it through. Don't have to get it super tight. Again, skip this side, go up here, zip tie it through. Just 
strap it in. Three more to go. Skip this. Go over here. Put the zip tie in, loop it through. Get it nice and nice and firm. Now you're gonna you're gonna notice that the fiberglass pole is really bending and forming to the fit of the frame, which is great. Um, again, skip this side. You're gonna go in over here, right, right next to this strap, the shoulder strap. Zip tie it through. Okay, and then the last one, number seven, again, up and under, all the way through. Like so. Okay, so now you wanna tighten everything so you get the, the rod as flush as possible. Check your ends, make sure that it's, the fiberglass rod is, is hitting the edge of this uh, frame. You just wanna slowly tighten everything. You wanna push down, push the rod down. So you get it real tight, like so. Push down, push down, pull, push down, pull, push down, pull. Push down, pull. Nice and tight. Okay, so once you have all of the zip ties secured, uh, you're gonna snip off the ends like so. Take your uh, wire cutter and just get real flush and just snip them off. Make sure all of these are tight. and just snip them off as flush as you can get them. You don't want any sharp edges to stick out. So just get it nice and close right there. Okay, so there you have it. And basically, uh, you repeat the same thing on the other side. So the next step will be adding these husky hangalls to the end of the uh, carabiners. So what you're gonna do is flip the rig around. Just flip it around like this. You have these ends sticking out. And you just add the straps to the carabiner. Like that. And you do the same thing on this side. So it should look like this. Okay, so the next step is to add your flex tubing. Um, the way I did it was I uncoiled uh, the tubing 
and basically you want to start here. So this is the uh, 3 8 inch flex tubing and this goes over the bare wire right here. And you just slip it in. It's split in the middle so you're able to slide this all the way through. Get all the way to the top and just slide it. It's a little tricky, but just keep pushing it through. Till it goes all the way in. Like so. So this is pre-cut, but when you have when you get the roll, you can, you know, kind of get it to the you can kind of like measure it just by holding it straight and then snipping it. But this is about 12 inches or so. And then you do the same thing with the half inch uh, flex tubing, and this will go on the, uh, the pole, the fiberglass rod. So again, similar thing. You're going to take the flex tubing and you're going to insert it in the split right here. And this should go to the edge, the top of the uh, metal ferrule right here. And you just keep pushing it through. And I'll bring this closer so you can take a look. Flex tubing goes all the way up here. Keep pushing it until you reach this edge right here. So right here is where um, is where the uh, flex tubing should end. Right at right at this zip tie the top zip tie, okay? And that's where you're going to cut your uh, flex tubing. So essentially, you'll have this uh, flex coil tubing all the way up over here, and then all along the bare wire. So you have a very nice kind of polished look to the rig. Okay, so the next step will be adding your Velcro straps and your key ring to the actual gimbal. And the way you do that is you essentially take your key ring right here and take your Velcro strap and you're going to wrap it around like so. Make sure you have your key ring facing up, obviously. And you just wrap your Velcro strap all the way around. Get it nice and tight so you have a secure fit. Take your second one, your second Velcro strap, and you wrap that around as well. This gives it an extra layer security here so you wrap that second strap around and your key ring should be as tight as possible to your the, hand, the top handle I'm sorry the top support of the uh, stabilizer and then you just repeat on the other side once you have the uh, key rings attached you're going to put the backpack on it should look kind of like this Okay, and uh, these husky hangalls will be hanging down over your head, so you just want to be careful about where you move. You don't want to swing these things and knock into someone or knock into uh, 
piece of equipment. Um, so just be, be careful with these. Um, so to attach it to the, uh, to the gimbal, you just have to kind of lower yourself, almost like you're, you're fishing. And you lower yourself and you just take the carabiners, take the, the big side, and you hook them on to the key rings, like so. And then you simply stand up. And everything should be nice and smooth. And you can immediately feel the lightness of the, uh, of the gimbal in your hands as all of the weight is distributed across your torso. And you can let go. So thanks for watching on how to make this DIY camera gimbal backpack stabilizer. If you have any questions or comments, hit me on the blog, on Instagram. Um, if you have any uh, ideas on how to improve upon this or make this more modular, um, definitely hit me up. I'd love to do sort of an upgraded version on this and, and share it with you guys. But um, again, this is one of the most fun projects, DIY projects that I've ever done. Um, so I encourage you guys to, to go out and do it. It's, it's totally, totally easy and fun.